Why? Zonal architectures are the next big thing in EV design. Hey there, EV lovers. Welcome to EVpedia, your ultimate hub for everything electric vehicles. If you're as pumped about the future of transportation as we are, then you've come to the right place. We're here to bring you the latest news, reviews, and tips on all things EV. But before we dive into the electric goodness, we need your help to keep our battery charged. So, if you enjoy what you see, give that subscribe button a little love, hit the like button to show your support, and drop us a comment with your thoughts or questions. We promise, we read every single one of them. It's the new buzzword in town for software-defined cars. Let us demystify it for you. When Rivian revealed its second-generation R1 models early this month, the press materials were teeming with technical jargon. Software stack, command centers, compute system, zonal architecture, and more. How did automakers go from boasting about gas-guzzling engines to drowning their audiences in esoteric Silicon Valley parlance? The term zonal architecture, however, stuck with us and seems key to the direction in which electric vehicles are headed. We heard it again when Volkswagen announced its investment of up to $5 billion in Rivian. Much of this partnership involves Rivian licensing its zonal hardware design, with VW and the two collaborating and advancing this tech for future EVs. If you're an electrical or software engineer, you're likely familiar with that term. For most others with a non-engineering background, here's what it means. Some basics first. Traditionally, cars have had centralized electrical architectures. They used miles and miles of wiring harnesses connecting various components to a main control unit or the brain of the car. The sheer length of these wires and the complexity of the systems made cars heavier and more challenging to service, according to Dutch semiconductor design company NXP. Older architectures also use separate modules for each function like lighting, infotainment, sensors, etc. That's inefficient, NXP says. Now the hardware-first approach is largely outdated. Teslas and many new Chinese EVs have ushered in a sort of role reversal. Carmakers are designing software and then considering how hardware needs to support it, giving birth to what we now commonly call software design vehicles, SDVs. Their performance and various features are heavily integrated and controlled through advanced software, allowing functions such as over-the-air updates, controlling everything via obnoxiously large touchscreens, and operating select functions remotely. Rivian says that for SDVs to be efficient and cost-effective, zonal architecture is the way to go. Zonal architecture. Zonal architectures reduce the amount of wiring harnesses and electronic control units, ECUs, needed in a vehicle by grouping a smaller number of ECUs in different zones of the vehicle, a Volkswagen spokesperson told Inside EVs. Rivian's zonal architecture reduces the number of ECUs from 17 to just seven highly powerful ones. This enabled it to remove 1.6 miles of internal wiring. Consequently, it shaved 44 pounds of weight from its EVs. Wiring in an electric car is like your body's central nervous system. It's an incredibly complex cobweb of cables spanning the entire car. Zonal architectures, however, are more like an office building with multiple departments on different floors responsible for a variety of dedicated tasks. Tesla was first to market with this tech. SNP said it has a five-year lead over rivals. Thanks to zonal architecture, the Model 3's wiring was reduced by 50% years ago, and it's the reason why it can be produced in less than half the time compared to rivals. But Tesla's Chinese and American rivals are finally catching up. Instead of organizing hardware compute based on function, these more powerful ECUs now control operations in their general vicinity or zone, Rivian said. What does this look like in the real world? The zones are typically defined based on functional requirements, such as powertrain, chassis, body, and infotainment systems. Each ECU is responsible for controlling a specific set of functions within its zone, such as engine control, suspension, lighting, or audio. The ECUs then communicate over a high-speed network, exchanging information, coordinating actions, and responding to varying conditions in real time. Let's assume the car's cameras, radar, and LIDAR detect an unavoidable object and initiate autonomous emergency braking, AEB. The ADAS system can then trigger a chain reaction of events. The lights start flashing, your seatbelt tightens up, windows get lowered, airbags get ready, and the screens display warnings. It's a result of these advanced ECUs communicating with each other. Benefits are huge. On the production line, a zonal system allows increased automation, according to the Society of Automotive Engineers. It's easier for robots to assemble lighter, less complex wires, and help with cost reduction. Most importantly in EVs, it helps improve driving range thanks to weight reduction. Zonal architectures also allow SDVs to offer subscription services. Heading to the ski resort? Buy a seat heating package. Embarking on a long road trip? 
Get an infotainment package for your passengers. We don't see this often yet, but it's likely to be a possibility in the future. Above all, the service and maintenance benefits are huge. One Rivian owner told Inside EVs last year that his R1T was out for repairs for almost a year just to replace a tiny side camera damaged in a minor crash. The service center had to yank out the entire wiring harness for that, and in the process, ended up doing more damage to the truck. With zonal architecture, problems like these will likely never occur. That's because each zone with control units can independently monitor and diagnose issues within their area. This enables quicker identification of faults, reducing the time needed for diagnostics and service. Service staff would hence also have easier access to individual components should they require quick replacements. As we've seen with Tesla, the learning curve is huge for automakers when it comes to mass deploying advanced tech. Recent studies have shown that EVs still suffer from quality issues, the majority of them tech-related. Things like zonal architecture seem like a step in the right direction, but for customers to witness any tangible benefits, automakers will have to nail it down to AT. And that's a wrap for today's episode of EVpedia. We hope you had as much fun as we did exploring the world of electric vehicles. Remember, your likes, subscribes, and comments are the sparks that keep our motor running. If you're feeling extra generous, consider using the Super Thanks feature to support us. Your contributions help us improve and bring you even more amazing content. So, click that subscribe button, give us a thumbs up, and let us know what you think in the comments below. Thanks for watching, and stay charged. Until next time, keep it electric.